you're looking at a couple of interesting space combat simulators. E Valkyrie Online, which comes with the Rift, uh, and Elite Dangerous, which comes on various headsets, I think, certainly the Rift and probably the Vive. Um, those are really, really suited to VR. You know, you're in a single person fighter ship and you're flying around like you would in a World War II dogfight. So that's great. You can look around the cabin, you can target device, you can target opponents just looking at them, things like that. Those play great and really, really nice. They're a bit shallow. And you play it for an hour or two, you think, mm, that was fun. Um, much like many of the games that are coming out at the moment, short games. Uh, Adrift's very interesting. That's set on a space station and you've got to try and uh, basically reinstall the oxygen supply in the engines and things like that while drifting around this space station. That's one of the titles which has made a number of people uh, fairly nauseous. Arguably, fairly realistically, because if you were drifting around a space station, I suspect most of us would get dreadfully sick. And you are seeing some very interesting uh, indie experiments. There's one called Loon, which is sort of a very sort of surreal platform puzzle game, uh, which is very entertaining. But it, it is those small releases which it's best to sample at the moment. A job simulator, which comes with the Vive, another interesting game. But we're really waiting for those proper titles to come out, which will be recognizable from the console generation. And that's going to take uh, you know, a year or 18 months. It was a quiet year. Uh, it was a quiet year. A lot of, lots of VR announcements, many of them sort of uh, more demos than anything else. Uh, I think the fact that The Last Guardian is finally going to ship after probably about a decade of development uh, is interesting. Um, the previous two games that that studio brought out have been phenomenal. Uh, really, sort of the ones that people hold up as uh, when people start to talk as video games, as art or uh, the narrative structure of video games. Those games have been, been uh, groundbreakers there, so that will be an interesting one to see. Uh, I, I think apart from that, it was uh, very much a case of more sequels, more annual titles, uh, and nothing that really blew me away, I'm afraid. Next one to two years? No, no. Uh, but I think once we... Uh, th there's another issue here, which you've also had when new consoles come out, is that if you develop a game for those new consoles, you're looking to sell to one, two, three million owners. Um, and if you're investing 100 million in developing the game, you want a bigger target audience than that. So I think the, the rock stars of this world will want to wait until there is a big audience that could potentially play these games before getting them out the door, which probably means realistically three years. Uh, uh, and also you are, th there are certain games which are just not suited to VR. We've had a whole uh, scene of sort of retro indie games recently they're going to look dreadful in VR, to be honest. They're better to be played in their 8-bit pixels on your TV. So not all games immediately transfer. Similarly with sort of strategy games, you know, you want to be able to jump around a map and, and arguably doing that in VR is more difficult than just doing it with a mouse and a keyboard in the real, in the real world uh, on a traditional sort of PC or console setup. Where we stand today with AR, which is sort of the smartphone-based AR, um, you are seeing interesting things like Pokemon Go uh, coming out very recently and, and that sort of idea of collecting Pokemon in the real world uh, is quite good fun and, it, and it's something you can do for a couple of minutes here and there and, and sort of track locations on your map where you need to go to to get a Pokemon. So it's, it's quite, first of all it gets around all those criticisms of gamers just sitting in their rooms not doing anything. AR gets you out in the world. Uh, and secondly, it's quite good fun to do with friends or to visit new locations, things like that. So that's great fun. When we get to the point of the, the wearable AR headsets, which are still further off than mass VR, we can see some very interesting gaming possibilities there, potentially. Uh, but that, that's a, a ways off. And there's nothing today that you can really play on those because they're not even really in consumers' hands.